humans can be saved from poverty. We can be saved from diseases, can be saved from dangers as well. But can we be saved from death? Everyone in the world would agree that it's not possible. But we can save humans from death. This documentary called Secret of the Universe would show you with proof as to how this can be achieved. According to the Puranas, Bhakta Markandeya was saved from the jaws of death by Lord Shiva. Gods and goddesses had churned the seas, drank the umbrit that had emerged from it and attained immortality. What do we come to infer from this? We can be saved from death, yes. Do you know when this happened? These secrets will be revealed to you now in a few moments. Who am I? Who are you? Do you have an answer to this question? We human beings are a combination of the body and the soul. Body can be seen, the soul cannot be. The body is different from the soul. In this, who are you? The soul or the body? It is said that the soul cannot be seen through the eyes, but we actually can. Soul can be seen through the eyes, not the physical eye, but using the third eye of knowledge, yes, we can see the soul between the eyebrows, behind the eyes. At the center of the brain is where the soul shines like a beautiful star, which can be seen through the eye of knowledge. In fact, we all can see it. This is called the eye of knowledge. The Bhagavad Gita says that the soul shines like a beautiful star between our eyebrows. Just like a car needs a driver, the soul is the driver for our body. We can see both the car as well as the driver with our eyes and hence we can differentiate between the two. But we humans can see only the body and not the soul. Hence, we naturally assume that the body does everything. We have forgotten the soul, the driver. The soul is a living energy invisible to our eyes. The soul cannot be destroyed by any weapon, fire, air or even water. The soul is immortal. The body that can be seen with these eyes is false. It's perishable. 
whereas the soul is imperishable. Just like the body is made up of different parts, the soul too has three inbuilt faculty. We call them as the mind, the intellect and the impressions. The mind continuously keeps generating thoughts. When someone dies, we pray that their soul may rest in peace. Which means the mind resides within the soul, right? The intellect discerns between these thoughts whether it is a good thought or a bad thought. Wise men and great souls continue to perform miracles even after Jiva Samadhi in this world. To perform good deeds, the intellect has to function well. If the body has attained Jiva Samadhi, where does the intellect reside? It resides within the soul. Yes. All our impressions get recorded. In fact, the soul records every action of ours. That's how we have sinful souls and righteous souls. Have you heard about Chitragupta? Do you know who he is? He is the one who keeps account of everyone's good and bad deeds. When we come to know his real identity, we will be surprised. Chitram plus Guptam combined together is Chitragupta. Chitram means painting. In other words, the body is depicted as a painting. Guptam means hidden which is the one that is hidden within this body. It is the soul, right? The soul is otherwise called as Chitragupta. Just like incidents that happen around us are captured by CCTV cameras and recorded in a computer. Similarly, all our good deeds as well as bad deeds are continuously recorded in the soul. We may commit a crime without others' knowledge, but we know fully well that we are committing a crime. Aren't we able to recall our childhood memories even today? Which means our memories are being recorded in the soul. Birth and death relate only to the body, not the soul. Just like the way we change our clothes, the soul leaves one body and takes birth in a new body through a mother's womb. This is what means taking another birth. Saints and Godmen have taken shelter in one body moving from another. What is it that leaves one body and takes another? Yes, it is the soul. The deeds which the soul performs in the present birth is what decide the fate of that soul's next birth. If the soul has performed good deeds, the next birth becomes gratifying. But if it has committed crimes, it meets the resultant fate. Based on the acts that we perform, we face both success and hardships. We are all familiar with the saying, as you sow, so you reap, right? We all know how a boomerang spins around and comes back to us. Similarly, the repercussions of our karma is very similar to that of a boomerang. Whatever we do comes back to us. That's why our forefathers have said, think well and do good deeds. 
The soul comprises of seven divine qualities. Peace, happiness, love, knowledge, purity, bliss, power. These are our original qualities, divine qualities. A personality called Chitragupta does not exist in reality. Similarly, Markandeya is not a representation of a single person. The ones who understand that they are imperishable souls, for them, the fear of death ceases to exist. So, each one of us is a Markandeya. Similarly, Amrit is not a liquid. We are talking about the Amrit of knowledge. The one who churns this knowledge saying, I am an immortal soul. They will be the ones who will not fear death. Now tell me, who am I? Who are you? Are we this perishable body or the immortal soul? the soul who is imperishable and I have no death. You might have now understood this truth. We are going to give you a surprising news. I mean a sweet surprising news. We all have two fathers. Is this a shocking news or a sweet surprise? You may decide this once you hear the full story. We just saw that the body and the soul are two different entities. Just as the perishable body has an identical father, the imperishable soul should also have an identical father, right? What is the form of a soul? like a point of light, like a shining star. So, the father of the soul should also be just like that, right? If we call ourselves a soul, then our father is also a soul. But we call him as the supreme soul. The supreme father, supreme soul. It means he is the highest father who is the most elevated person in the world. He is none other than God. That's why people around the world call him with different names such as Almighty, Allah, God, Jehovah or Godfather. Who are we? We are all souls. Hence, this proves the fact that God is the father of each and every soul in this world, right? So, it is true that all of us have two fathers, right? Everyone in this world is in search of God. But we aren't able to see Him. Why is this? It is because none of us have been able to see the soul through the physical eyes. So, how can we expect to see the Supreme Father, Supreme Soul through these physical eyes? That's why we say Thank God you had come to my rescue. God would come in any form to save us. We take bodies as we come into the cycle of birth and death. 
we have a body but god is beyond the cycle of birth and death so he doesn't have a body of his own he wouldn't take birth in a mother's womb then is it true that god is a point of light how do we get to know this there is only one way to find this out this world has a variety of religions how do people of each religion describe god are they all claiming god to be a point of light do they all worship a source of light this is sure to reveal the truth first let's take a look at the hindu religion it could quite be confusing god is only one but look at how many the hindus worship thinking they are god they all have a human form the great souls who had once lived and the souls who are still living are being worshiped as god we have also gone to the extent of saying god is only present and that He resides in each and every person. He is also worshipped in trees, plants, birds, animals, rats, snakes, water, fire, air, among other things. So, are we wrong to say that God is bodiless? that he is a point of light how could that not be true god does not have a body of his own since his form is that of a point of light the hindus have created an idol of worship as a representation of that light this idol has been given a specific name do you know what that is lingam om namah shivaya Lingam is also called as Jyotir Lingam. Jyotirubane viniya iraivane paavam pokkidum parama tandaye In India the 12 Jyotir Lingams are very famous. He is Shiva Sada Shiva Shiva means the one who is always benevolent. He is also called Shiv Jyoti, Param Jyoti, Maha Jyoti. Viniya iraivane paavam pokkidum paramatan God Shiva is portrayed as the mother as well as the father. He is the mother and the father of all souls. It is said that God is the one who caters to everyone's needs meaning one who protects the entire world Shiva is self manifested they say that he does not have a mother father or a teacher meaning guru do the people of hindu religion know that god is a point of light he is bodiless No they don't. If they had known, they wouldn't have called this idol who has a body God Shiva. They wouldn't have worshiped him as Shiva. Then who is this? 
Why is he also called as Shiva? In reality, his name is Shankar. He is called Shiva Shankar. Shiva Shiva Shankar, Hara Hara Shankar, Jaya Jaya Shankar, Digirara, Priya Panda, Mashankar, Prakata Shubhankar, Pranaya Bhayankar, Digirara. Shiva Shiva Shankar, Hara Hara Shankar, Jaya Jaya Shankar, Digirara, Priya Panda, Mashankar, Prakata Shubhankar, Pranaya Bhayankar, Digirara. God doesn't have a body of his own. Any task that he wants to do, he has to get it done through others. And hence, he uses Brahma as an instrument of creation, Vishnu as an instrument of protection and Shankar as an instrument of destruction. Since he is responsible for the creation of these three deities, he should have been named Trimurti Shiva. The religious texts were misinterpreted. They told that Shiva and Shankar are one and the same. Hiding Shiva's true identity, they named him Trimurti Brahma. Shiva is identified as the god of love, but Shankar is identified as the destroyer. They say that he can destroy this world with his third eye. He sits and meditates in front of the Shivalinga. So, we can say that there is God Shiva who is a point of light beyond Shankar, right? How is Shankar depicted without any piece of cloth? God Shiva does not have a body of his own. Hence, Shankar is shown as a representation of Shiva where the cloth is a depiction of the body. Then why do we worship these deities who are shown as a manifestation of human beings? Jesus and Buddha had left their imprints in this world. Hence their religious followers worship and pay tribute to their idols and statues. Similarly, there had been a time when the deities filled with divine qualities had inhabited Bharat, meaning India. Then came the Islam religion. They call God by the name Allah. They too believe that God does not have a body or a form. It's fine to say that he does not have a body, but it's wrong to say that he does not have a form. God does have a form. It's that of a point of light, like a shining star. The same is stated in their holy text, Quran, as well. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. He radiates like a shining pearl and that of a shining star. It is also well quoted saying, Allah is the knower of everything. The prophets have also been known to say that Allah is Noor. Noor means light. There is a light-shaped stone called Sangye Aswad in Mecca. The Muslims believe that to be the holy stone and offer prayers with love. What does that stone resemble? That of a lingam. Isn't it? The Islam religion also believes that God does not have a body. They too say that he is like a shining star. And the third, Christianity. What do the Christians say? They say that Jesus is God. They believe him to be God. But what did Jesus say? 
When he was crucified, he had pointed out to God and asked, God, why didn't you help me? If Jesus is calling out to God, then how can Jesus be God? He has also told that God is in the form of a light. Bible, which is the holy text of Christianity, also says the same thing. God is light. The Bible says, This is the message we have heard from him and announce to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Christianity too has proved that God does not have a body. He is in the form of a light. The founder of Sikh religion Guru Nanak has told Ekomkar meaning God is only one and he is bodiless. Vallala too has said that God is only one. He is the all bestowing light souls. So every religious founder across the world has acknowledged that God is bodiless. He is a form of light. He is the one who is worshipped as God. If God is said to be only one, then why is he called with different names? Just like in different languages, water is called as Nilu, Pani, Tanni, Jal by different names. Similarly, God is called by different names in different religions such as Ishwar, Allah, Jehovah, Parampita, God and so on. The subject is the same but the language is different. What do we know from this? Well, there are many names but God is only one in the form of light. So, who is God? He is the father of all the souls in this world. Does anyone know this secret? No, they don't. The secret of the soul and the supreme soul have been revealed to you now. Is it just enough if you know who God is? Don't you want to meet him? For that, we need to know where he resides. It is said that God is the creator of this world. So, he should be able to see the entire world, right? Where can he see this from? He will be able to see only from the sky, right? Jesus was glancing at the sky when he called out, Hey Supreme Father, Supreme Soul. When someone dies, we all point our fingers upwards saying, He has gone to heaven or the supreme abode. This indicates that God should be upwards, right? So, 
If God resides up, his children should also be residing up, right? Why have we come down here separating ourselves from him? What are we actually doing here? Let us see this secret as well. Devur Siva Pura, Paralog Pir Pura, Sundar Pura Vittu Vittu Yappadi Inge Vande Nne Dariyaliye. Ula Gavard Devur Pura, Teriya Villa Mar Pura, Enna Petta Appan Siva Nida Yappadi Tirundi Povadi Inne Puriyaliye. Sundar Pura Angirka Bandha Matra Vidirka. There are three worlds in total. The first one is the world that is the earth in which we reside. We have come down here to play our parts in this eternal world drama. Shakespeare has also mentioned that this entire world is a drama stage and that we all play our parts in it. If this entire world is a drama stage, then what do we call the ones standing on this stage? Actors, right? This body is like the clothes which we wear. We see that the actors keep changing costumes in a play. Similarly, for every birth, we change the body and play our parts. The second one is the subtle world. This world of bright light is called the land of flying angels. The third world radiates a golden reddish hue of bright light. It is in this world that Paramatma Shiva resides. This is the place where we souls also used to reside. This is our original home. The sun's rays can never reach here. This world is also called as the soul world, Brahmalok, Parlok, Paramdham, Mukti Dham, Shanti Dham, Nirvan Dham, Shivalok, Supreme Abode. Every religion has its own way of calling this place. Our journey to this world starts from here. Who are we? We are the ones who are playing our parts in this world drama. So, aren't we entitled to know the secrets of this drama? Usually, a play is performed for about three hours. But if you were to know the duration of this world drama, you would really be surprised. 5,000 years. It takes 5,000 years for this drama to complete a cycle. God too has his part in this play. He only comes for the climax scene. Once the play is over, it starts again from the beginning. The same actors with the same appearance would once again play their parts. Once a film is shot and released, it does not change how many ever times we see it. Right? Similarly, this world drama also does not change. It keeps repeating every 5,000 years. The entire story that happens around this 5,000 years can be put in just one word. It is our thoughts that create this world. Similarly, thoughts are responsible for destruction as well. To be more precise, our thoughts reflect our life. In other words, what we think is how we live. Mm -hmm. 
This eternal drama has a lot of religions. The souls play their roles accurately in their own religion. There are four major religions. First, we have the Adi Sanatana Devi Devata Dharma. Then, we have the Islam religion. Then comes Buddhism. And finally, we have Christianity. The souls belonging to these four religions make the foundation of this world drama. You might have come across the swastik symbol. The way the clock shows the time. Swastik Chakra 2 is the clock that represents the 5000 years of this world eternal drama. This is divided into four equal parts. Satyuga, the Golden Age. Treta Yuga, the Silver Age. Dwapara Yuga, the Copper Age. And Kali Yuga, the Iron Age. These four Yugas together add up to 5000 years. This is what is called as a Kalpa. Traveling back 2000 years from today, Jesus Christ had established Christianity. 250 years prior to that, Buddha had established Buddhism. 250 years prior to the coming of the Buddha, Ibrahim had established the Islam religion. It has been 2500 years since the beginning of these three religions. 2500 years prior to these, there used to be only one religion called the Adi Sanatana Devi Devata Dharma in which the souls were playing their part. This was the religion of the deities. Put together, it comes to 5000 years. Satyoga was ruled by Sri Lakshmi and Sri Narayan. Treta Yuga was ruled by Sri Sita and Sri Ram. These 2500 years saw the deities rule the lands as one family with cooperation, good health, happiness, peace, so much as not even being aware of things like death, sadness, tears. Hence it was called heaven or Vaikuntam. There is also evidence for this. The Holy Bible, which is the foundation of the Christians, also says that there was heaven on earth 3000 years before Christ. It has been 2000 years since Jesus Christ had arrived. 3000 years had passed before he had come. So in total, we have 5000 years. This is proof enough that the duration of this eternal world drama is 5000 years. Towards the end, we have Kaliyug. Due to the emergence of many religions, people have lost their peace of mind due to the confusion and violence happening. Today, the world is witnessing these horrible scenes. Do you know where we are right now in this eternal world drama? We are in the last final phase. This is the climax. The destruction of Kali Yuga has been illustrated in the Bible accurately. The people were given a fair warning of the coming destruction in the year 2000 by the Christians. In order to cleanse this dirty world, we are also witnessing how nature too shows its disapproval through rehearsals by causing natural disasters like earthquakes and tsunamis every now and then. Every nation has accumulated its own share of atomic weaponry in order to be prepared for a third world war.
does this essentially mean? It means that the play is coming to an end. Nadagam vidum neeranda nucha kaatchi nadakudamma. Vesham kalakkavum oivu edukkavum velai nerungudamma. that god descends to this world to play his role in the climax why should he descend in order to destroy evil injustice and restore righteousness how can the world drama end without god descending to this world we are living our lives with deception of our temporary attainments namely relationships wealth power and so on nothing is permanent or truth it's all an act a part of this drama yella nadagam endrayo poyai vaalbavan endrayo yella nadagam endrayo poyai vaalbavan endra very big secret of this drama is going to be revealed now who are we we are the people of india bharat so being the people of bharat it's only appropriate that we come to know how we started our roles the story of bharat is the story of the people of bharat In other words it's the wonderful story of the 84 births that the deities take call it what you want it is the deities who played the hero part at the beginning of this eternal world drama they then take births after births and finally they are reduced to zero This story tells us how they again become heroes how they become deities It was in Bharat that the deities had their kingdom Now there is neither the kingdom nor the deities who ruled the kingdom But we do see the signs of their having lived and gone here in the form of temples all around Bharat It is their story we are going to see now. How would you say Bharat is now? Would you call it new or old? It is definitely old because the food that we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe are all poisoned. Because of this, just see how many new diseases more deaths how much of sadness let's just go back 100 years the population had been comparatively less and there had not been as much advancement in science we did not have pesticides insecticides and all there were hardly diseases food was organic body was healthy and life expectancy was also high everyone lived their lives in contentment peace happiness as one family just see 100 years back how people very much less in number had lived ever so happily just imagine how bharat was 5000 years back how would have the world been when god had first created it contemplate are 
The Bharat, which can be seen as a very old world today, was the same Bharat which was heavenly, carrying the name Vaikuntam, 5,000 years back. It was the souls of the Adi Sanatana Devi Devta religion who had come first to play their parts in this eternal world drama. There had only been 9 lakh deities at first. In Satyu, Prince Krishna and Princess Radha had lived in their own kingdoms. Once their coronation was done, they were given the names Lakshmi and Narayan. This is the reason why only Krishna's birth is celebrated and not Narayan's. Krishna and Narayan are one and the same. Vishnu is the combined form of Lakshmi and Narayan. There is no separate entity called Vishnu. Their dynasty is called the Sun Dynasty. This is how the name Surya Narayanan came into existence. They are part of the deity clan. In Satyug, each and every deity had lived as one family with cooperation, peace and happiness. No death, sadness or tears in Satyuk. Everyone identified themselves as a soul. When they became old, they knew that they are going to take birth again as a child and that they would be happy. Hence it is called the land of immortality. The five vices of lust, anger, greed, attachment and ego do not exist there. In Satyug, a child is born through the power of thoughts. In Mahabharata, it is shown how Karna is born to Mother Kunti by the sun's rays. In the same way, in Satyuk, the deities take eight births in a span of 1250 years. Then comes the Treta Yug. Treta Yug is ruled by Sri Ram and Sri Sita. Sri Krishna continues to walk this journey and takes birth in Treta Yug as well. In this age, also, people live in peace and happiness with cooperation and oneness. There is no fear of death or cries of distress. It is called the Moon Dynasty. The name Sri Ramachandra Murthy is derived from here. They all belong to the Kshatriya clan. In Treta Yug, the deities take 12 births. As they keep taking birds, the soul loses some of its power. So there is an increase in the number of birds. At the end of Treta Yuga, there are a total of 33 crore deities. Hence the saying goes, 33 crore deities. The 33 crore deities who have been mentioned in the scriptures are same people of Bharat who had lived and gone at this time. Then. A perceptive change happens. Deities who adopt a new body, birth after birth, forget that they are a soul. They start perceiving themselves as the body and then they start 
getting attracted to the body and as a result they commit sins which they are not supposed to they lose their purity and divine qualities as a result they lose the privilege of calling themselves deities adam and hawa mentioned by the islams and adam and eve mentioned by the christians pertain to the same deities why have they been portrayed naked the deities unaware of body consciousness were living in soul consciousness so they have shown them to be naked everything is destroyed in the fury of nature the land of bharat is split into many parts the body may perish but the soul does not the copper age or dwapara yuga then begins all deities take birth here as ordinary human beings krishna takes birth as king vikramaditya here as we commit sins due to body consciousness we fall into sorrows to get relieved from this sorrow we start seeking god king vikramaditya gets a vision of god as a point of light he then goes on to make a huge diamond lingam builds a temple out of gold and performs the rituals with his own hands and thus begins the path of devotion as the path of devotion begins the first temple is built to lord shiva in a place called Somnath in Gujarat It is not the same Somnath shrine that we see now This temple has been reconstructed many a time History tells us that Muhammad Ghajni along with his cavalry had invaded India 17 times just to loot this temple Sorrow keeps increasing every day The subtle deities Vishnu and Shankar are worshipped in their idol form. We then start making idols of our own original deity form and worship it. As righteousness is lost and injustice increases, sages and saints start writing the Vedic scriptures. The Mahabharata and the ramayana had been written at that time krishna had lived in satya yug but he is worshiped in dwapar yug they have created false stories saying krishna had told the bhagavad gita in this dwapar yug deities take 21 births This clan is said to be the Vaishya clan. Finally, there is Kali Yuga. In this Kali Yuga, deities who live and walk among the common people take 42 births. Their clan here is that of the Shudras. Deities who had once lived in Satyug and Tritayug have forgotten their true identity and are living here as ordinary people. How do we identify them? It's very simple. In this eternal world drama, how many important religions did we see? There are four main religions. What are they? Adi Sanatana Devi Devata religion the religion of Islam the religion of Buddhism and the religion of Christianity today we see only three religions the deity religion which had come first and foremost is not in existence anymore it has disappeared but did you notice that a new religion called Hinduism has come into existence 
we haven't seen the existence of this religion in our 5000 year world cycle did we even adi shankaracharya had established only the sannyasi religion not hinduism if that is the case then where did hinduism come from who had established the hindu religion no one the people had formed it by themselves the christians pray to jesus christ who had established their religion the buddhists pray to buddha who established their religion similarly who is worshipped by each and every person who call themselves hindus god shiva is the one who is worshipped and then krishna lakshmi narayan sita and rama are also worshipped right ram jay ram jay jay ram shri ram jay ram jay jay ram shri ram jay ram jay jay ram then who are the hindus they are the same deities of the adi sanatana devi devta religion just think about it in the memory of satyug the kingdom of lakshmi narayan in memory of bharat of heaven and paradise the hindus still today follow the tradition of visiting the temple of vishnu on vaikuntha ekadashi they stand in queues to witness the grand opening of the gates of heaven then who are the hindus from this isn't it evident that the hindus were once the 33 crore deities of the adi sanatana devi devata religion why did they call themselves hindus they took birth as ordinary people because they forgot the true identity of soul consciousness and started committing sins as they resided in the region of hindustan they started calling themselves the hindus this is how hindu religion had originated india's ancient name is bharat the name mahabharat was taken from here the name india hindustan is something which had come in in between let's take a closer look take the example of mahatma gandhi we all know that he was there but now he is no more what happened to him he was assassinated the body might perish but the soul does not the soul of mahatma gandhi would adapt the body of a newborn child and take another birth now the same child would have grown and would be studying in a school what lesson is the child learning that mahatma gandhi is the father of our nation does the child know that it was he who was mahatma gandhi in the previous birth or does the teacher know that this child had led its previous life as mahatma gandhi in the same manner the 33 crore deities having taken many births and had forgotten their true identity who do they worship they go to their own temples and worship themselves just as the child had been taught a lesson that mahatma gandhi is the father of our nation among the 33 crore deities only 3 quarters of them remain in the hindu religion the remaining one quarter had disappeared do you know where they disappeared they had been transferred to other religions have you been able to realize who you are well who are you you are the residents of bharat you had been living as the 33 crore deities in this very bharat now you live as ordinary beings do you know where we are 
in this eternal world drama we are in the final phase the climax of scene is an actor playing a part in this play as we saw earlier he comes only at the climax if he does not descend to this earth how will this play come to an end we saw that this drama consists of four parts but there is a fifth part too no one is aware of this it is not mentioned in any of the scriptures the ocean and the rivers meet at a confluence similarly the intermediate age between kaliyug and satyug is also called as the confluence age this age is equal to a diamond this age is higher than satyug because it is in this age that god descends on this earth In this kaliyug we see that unrighteousness has taken its peak God comes down to destroy injustice and restore righteousness back to its glory by establishing the Adi Sanatana Devi Devata Dharma Yes when this Bharat was heaven for 2500 years There was only one deity religion. Today we have all other religions. But there is no deity religion. God descends to the earth in order to establish this deity religion. Why should the deity religion be established again? Because the drama is to come to an end. what happens once it ends the drama starts once again from the beginning the deity souls would be playing the first part in this drama but where are they now they are living right here having forgotten about themselves and their religion it is essential for them to know their true identity What is the state of everyone presently? Each one of them has become impure, dirty souls. Who will purify them? Without purification, how will Satyug emerge? If Satyug has to come, then the true God has to descend. Without his arrival, how will there be a new world? What brings end to dusk? and the beginning to a new dawn it is the sun in the same way to end the night of kaliyug and to bring the day of satyug god definitely has to descend on the earth every inhabitant on the earth has forgotten the truth that they are a soul they continue to live in body consciousness to dispel the ignorance and darkness of kali yug the sun of knowledge shiva parmatma has to descend and hence this tiny age is called the confluence age it is also called as purushottam sangam yug what is purush it is the soul this is the age where each and every person realizes that they are a soul and lead an elevated life this is why it is called as purushottama sangam yug the reason why sangam yug is compared to that of a diamond is because in this drama of 5000 years it is in this age that souls and the supreme soul meet in person and celebrate an auspicious time 
This entire time you have been patiently listening to the knowledge of the soul, the supreme soul and the eternal world drama. Who is the one who can reveal all these secrets? Can it be revealed by the deities who were the first ones to step into these lands? Or can it be revealed by the sages and saints who had come in between? Where are all these people now? Since they came into the circle of births and deaths, they have forgotten their true identity and are living in Kali Yuga among ourselves. Then, who else can reveal this secret? If we are the ones explaining to you, who had explained to us? It can only be told by the one who does not come in the cycle of births and deaths. Only the director of the eternal world drama can reveal. Only Paramapita, Shiva Paramatma can reveal it. When all righteousness is lost and when injustice is at its pinnacle, I descend on this earth and restore righteousness. This is the promise of God in the Bhagavad Gita. As promised, He has already come. He has come, but what is everyone thinking? They all are thinking that Krishna is God. They believe that it was Krishna who revealed the Gita. They are all awaiting for the arrival of Sri Krishna. So they are not able to understand that God has come down to this earth. Who is Krishna? He is the first born prince of Satyug. Once his coronation is done, he becomes Narayan. He takes many births and finally at the end of Kaliyug, he is living among us as an ordinary being. Then who is the principal actor of the Gita? Without doubt, it has to be Krishna. But it was Paramapita, Shiva Paramatma, who had revealed the Gita. Let's see how. How is a hero portrayed in a movie? He would be living happily and prosperous times with his family. The villain would then come with his gang of hooligans. Beat up the hero, mess up the family and then leave. At the end, there would be a person who would remind the hero, who you are, how you were, where did all your bravery and courage go? You can do it. Victory is in your hands. He would inspire the hero this way. The hero then summons strength, goes and beats up the villain and returns victoriously. This is what ideally happens in a movie, right? Similarly, who is the principal actor in this eternal world drama? Shri Krishna. Peace, happiness and oneness were the order of the day. Then came the villain, Ravan. He invades into their lives and slowly destroys it. He abducts their kingdom, then reduces them to nothing and makes them beggars. You might wonder why Ravana a character from Ramayana has jumped into our story. Who is Ravan? He is the ruler of Lanka. How many heads does Ravan have? Ten heads. Do you see any human with ten heads? Isn't it a point to ponder about? So, who is this Ravan? Why have they created this character called Ravan? In Dwapar Yuga, the deities forget themselves to be the souls and then start perceiving themselves as bodies. And because of this, both male and female 
start developing these five vices or evil qualities of lust, anger, greed, attachment and ego. So the five evil qualities of male and female altogether make the ten faces of Ravana. That's how it has been made that Ravana has ten faces in the story. Who had Ravan kidnapped and kept in prison? Sita. Here, Sita represents the souls. Lanka that is shown is not only the land Lanka, but right now the whole world is like Lanka. Because the world is caught up in the act of the five vices of Ravan. Here, Shiv Paramatma is depicted as Rama. To relieve each and every person from the five vices of Ravana, Shiva Paramatma has come in person. Why did Rama suspect Sita and she had to go through the fire ordeal? Since Dwapar Yuga, for 2500 years, the soul had become dirty due to the accumulation of many sinful stains. In Pava Karnak, Patti El Portal, Sulla Nadan Gadama, Ulam Sulla Nadan Gadama, Munam Pana Vinaikala, Yen and Rupartal, Acham Pirat Gadama, Vinay Micham Yirat Gadama. The soul had lost all its purity. What would people do to wash away sins in the path of devotion? They would take bath in the river Ganga. In fact, it would only cleanse bodily stains. Sinful stains present in the soul wouldn't be cleansed. They have shown river Ganga falling from Shankar's head. What comes from the head? Knowledge or water? Knowledge or intelligence only comes. For the people who would bathe in the knowledge that God Shiv Paramatma is disposing presently, the sinful stains accumulated by their souls would be cleansed and purified. The real meaning of fire ordeal is to realize that I am a soul and immerse oneself in the immense love of God. In that fire of yoga, the sins of the soul would burn completely and be reduced to ashes. The soul would become pure gold. This is what has been portrayed as a big story in the Ramayana. Let's take the topic of Gita. Gita is a scripture that gives us a clear understanding of what is right and wrong. Krishna had lived in Satyug, but we started worshipping Krishna in Dwaparyug. So, they have composed the scriptures saying Krishna had lived in Dwaparyug. They say that the Mahabharata war had taken place at that time. Why did the Mahabharata war happen? To destroy injustice and establish righteousness. Compared to Kalyug, the people of Dwapar Yug were more good in nature. They had good values. The Kalyug that we see at present seems to be an unjust world with atrocious people all around. In such testing times of Kalyug, there was one ordinary person who had raised above and told, let's not resort to violence, we can only win through non-violence and got us freedom. He turned out to be the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. If an ordinary man who lived in Kalyug was able to win only adopting principles of non-violence without using violence, then why did Krishna, who was given a status of God, inspire the Mahabharata war in Dwapar Yug? If an ordinary man was able to achieve this, why did Lord Krishna not have this power? It is a good question to ask ourselves. 
Krishna had lived in Satyug, but we started worshipping Krishna in Dwapar Yug. Hence, in the religious texts, they had shown Krishna as God and distorted the truth, saying that he was the one who spoke the Gita. In reality, it was Shiv Paramatma who spoke the Bhagavad Gita. Instead of putting the name of the father, they had by mistake put the name of the child, Shri Krishna. Shiva and Shankar were first told to be the same. Similarly, they had replaced God's name in the Gita and created a lot of confusion. As mentioned in the Shastras, even if we were to assume that the Mahabharata war had taken place in Dwapar Yug, what should have come after Dwapar Yug? It should have been Satyug, right? But no, we ended up in Kaliyug. If Lord Sri Krishna had set out to bring righteousness to this world, today we would be having Kaliyug or Satyug. What do we know from this? The Mahabharata war did not take place in Dwapar Yug. When did it happen then? It has not yet happened. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in the future in this Kali Yug. What comes after Kali Yug? Satyug. Who can establish Satyug? Only the true God, Shiva Paramatma, can establish it. You would all be shocked if you knew when God had actually descended on earth. It has been 85 years since Shiva Paramatma had descended on this earth. It sounds a little strange, doesn't it? To know that God has already arrived and yet we are not aware of it. You might recall that happened 20 years ago when an idol of Lord Ganesha was able to drink milk. On hearing this miraculous news, temples of Lord Ganesha all over the world were overwhelmed with devotees standing in long queues offering milk to the idol. It is a scene that cannot be forgotten. As people don't venture to seek the truth, they do not have the power to understand that God has come. They don't believe, they just laugh. It is because they have been immersed in darkness of ignorance. The darkness has to be dispelled and they have to be brought to light. The day that Shiv Paramatma manifests in this world is celebrated as Shivaratri. Shiva Paramatma does not have a body. He doesn't come in the cycle of births and deaths. Then how will he make us understand? Be it Atma or Paramatma, we definitely need a mouth in order to speak. When Shiva Paramatma came to this earth, he needed a temporary body to share knowledge. Whose body did he choose? In Satyug, who took the birth first? Shri Krishna. In his final birth, when he was 60 years old, God had manifested in his body. Do you know why God had chosen him? Because Krishna is the principal actor of this eternal world drama. Once the drama is over, he has to act again in the first scene. So, God had disclosed this knowledge to him first. Do you know when this happened? In the year 1936. That secret is going to be revealed to you now. Our story starts in the city of Hyderabad that was located in Sindh province, which was then India, but now Pakistan. In a small village, a boy was born to a humble teacher. His name was Lekaraj. He was born in the year 1876. He was an ardent devotee of Lord Narayan right from his childhood. 
An interesting fact here is, in his next birth, he would be the one who takes birth as Sri Krishna in Satyug and becomes Narayan after his coronation. Since he did not have much interest in studies, he did wheat business. Then he went on to become a diamond merchant. He had seen a lot of success in the diamond business, making a lot of money. Lake Raj had become a multimillionaire. His diamond business had flourished in the cities of Bombay and Calcutta. Everyone started calling him Dada as a mark of respect. Dada means the eldest brother. His wife was named Yashoda. He had two sons and three daughters. As he was a devotee of Narayan, he had named his sons Krishna and Narayan. Dada Lekraj had reached the age of 60. All of a sudden, one day, he had an out-of-body experience. He was floating without a body. Subsequently, when he had visited Banaras, he had a vision of Lord Vishnu who told him, you are only that, and then disappears. He gets the news about the death of his uncle Mulchand. A few days later, he witnesses the death scene of his uncle. He gets the vision of the soul leaving the body and going outside. He learns that the body dies, but there is no death for the soul. Then he gets a vision of Krishna telling him, you are only that and then disappears. Dada Lekraj goes into a deep contemplation, trying to find out who is responsible for these visions. Finally, he realizes that it is God who is revealing to him these secrets. At that time, he gets a vision of Supreme Soul Shiva as a point of light. We being his children, also resemble his form. We forget our true identity while we are acting in this stage. God descends on earth, reveals the truth and takes us back home with him. He also sees visions of destruction of the world. There is en masse violence. There are huge blasts of nuclear bombs. At that time, nuclear weaponry had not been in vogue at all. In India, there is massive outbreak of riots and people are killing each other. There is bloodshed all over the place. People are in deep pain and agony. The whole world is destroyed in a series of natural disasters. Dada understands that the Mahabharata war is going to happen again. Similarly, over the next one year, many such visions are shown to his soul, who is going to be Krishna. It takes almost a year because the soul does not have the capacity to understand anything in this Kali Yuga. Dada retires from his business. One night, Shiv Paramatma manifests in Dada's body and reveals who he truly is. Nijananda Swarupam Shivoham Shivoham Gnana Swarupam Shivoham Shivoham Prakasha Swarupam Shivoham Shivoham that in order to create a new world, God has taken his body as a medium of communication. 
he goes on to understand that in reality I am Arjuna and God has chosen my body as the chariot. In Bhakti, they have shown him as the Nandi bull, the carrier of God Shiva. Using his lotus mouth, Paramatma starts discussing the knowledge of the Gita. Those who had come to listen to the knowledge start getting visions of Krishna, visions of Satyug. On hearing about this miraculous incidence that Shiva Paramatma was doing, people start gathering in huge crowds. God adopted Dada as his child and gave him the name Prajapita Brahma. The children who are born by listening to the knowledge of the Gita through the lotus mouth of Brahma are the children of Brahma. They are the children who are adopted by Shiv Paramatma. The secrets of God's manifestation onto this world has to reach souls from every corner of the earth. God has chosen a few people to assist him in this task. They are called Brahma Kumars and Brahma Kumaris. <laughs> This very Brahma takes birth as Krishna in Satyug and then becomes Vishnu. Vishnu again becomes Brahma after 5000 years. It is this aspect that is written in the scriptures saying Brahma was born from the belly button of Vishnu and Vishnu was born from the belly button of Brahma. At the beginning, this university was called by the name Om Mandali. Many people had flocked in, devoid of age barriers, breaking all restrictions to listen to the knowledge that was given by God and to inculcate the same in their lives. Among them, the most important was Radhe. She was only 17 years of age then. Once she listened to the knowledge, she decided to surrender her life in the service of God. Everyone started calling her Om Radhe. And then, they started calling her Mama with love. Nearly 400 people had surrendered their entire life in service of God to help him in this task of renewal. Shiv Paramatma had Brahma start a trust and invest all his property into the trust. Brahma had readily obliged to the instructions given by God and acted accordingly. In the month of October 1937, he had made Om Radhe the head of the organization which included a committee of eight women. This organization was given the name Prajapita Brahma Kumaris Ishwarya Vishwavidyalaya. Dada had facilitated all arrangements to run this organization. The lives of women had to be uplifted. They must be respected. Their honor must be restored in the society. Even they should attain an elevated status. Keeping all this in mind, Shiv Paramatma had given more precedence to women and made them the carriers of the urn of knowledge. Not only in India, but the entire world had to be uplifted. God had commissioned women to carry out this task. God had preached that the five vices of lust, anger, greed, attachment and ego, which are like poison, has ruined everyone's life for a long time and that now 
had to be let go. During those times, Om Mandali had to face a lot of opposition. Men pelted stones, torched buildings, and created a lot of chaos around them. Defamatory articles were written in the press. An American newspaper had published an article mocking the organization. In the year 1947, India-Pakistan partition had happened. The city of Karachi was in flames. However, Muslim brothers had offered protection to run God's Yajna. And so the Yajna had continued to run in Karachi. On the directions of God Shiv Paramatma, in 1950, around 400 brothers and sisters had started their journey to India by boarding a ship. On reaching India, they took a train to Mount Abu, situated in Rajasthan. Since each one had been listening to the knowledge of the Gita directly from God Shiv Paramatma, these sisters became the Ganges of knowledge. God's directions to them was that, along with the people of India, the people from all corners of the world should get a chance to know about God's descent and receive this divine knowledge. These sisters had actually come from aristocratic families and were accustomed to comfortable lifestyles. But since they had understood the true God, they let go of all their materialistic positions, even their near and dear ones, and had surrendered their entire life in service of God. They then started their journey across the world, revealing the secrets of God's descent. Do you know when Brahma Kumaris had come to Tamil Nadu? In the year 1970. As per God's directions, Sister Rosi and Sister Lakshmi had come to a city called Madras, now called Chennai. They didn't know the language. They didn't know anyone around. They had taken a room in a lodge next to Krishnamini Theatre in Tinaga and started searching for a rented house. No one offered them a house on rent. For almost a month, they had relentlessly roamed around the streets looking for houses. Finally, there was one person who helped them by giving his house for rent. Do you know who that was? An old-time famous singer, Ghantashala. He had created an immense fortune by giving his place for God's service. It has been 51 years since Brahma Kumaris have come to Tamil Nadu. How many people are aware of the fact that God had descended on this earth? The reason why Brahma Kumaris have come in search of you is because you are all brother souls. You are the children of God and most importantly you are the people of Bharat. You are the ones who lived in Satyug as 33 crore deities. The Brahma Kumaris are coming to give you an introduction to God and make your life like diamonds. We are the ones who ruled for 2500 years in Satyug and Tretayug. Since we had forgotten that we are souls and had come into body consciousness, we had committed a lot of sins and lost our kingdom. What is going to happen in Kaliyug? It is coming to an end. Once it ends, what comes next? Satyug. Who are going to live in the golden palaces of Satyug, enjoying a life free of death? It is we, the people of Bharat.
திருநாள் மீண்டும் கடவுளே அது நீ வந்த நேரம் கலியுகம் இது விடை பெறும் காலம் சத்திய யுகம் அது நிலை பெறும் நேரம் கல்ப கல்பமாய் சந்திப்போம் நாமும் திருநாள் மீண்டும் கடவுளே அது நீ வந்த நேரம் கலியுகம் இது விடை பெறும் காலம் சத்திய யுகம் அது நிலை பெறும் நேரம் கல்ப கல்பமாய் சந்திப்போம்
are the ones who have to rule in Satyug. How are we supposed to rule there? What are the customs? This can be learnt through Raja Yoga. In other words, Raja Yoga meditation. Do you know what meditation is? A cell phone should have a charge in order for us to use it. Towards the night, it gets discharged. The next day, we put it on charge again and start talking. Similarly, we all had taken 84 births and played our parts as we came along. The soul had lost its power. It has to be recharged. Only then will we be able to play our parts for the next 5000 years. In this Sangam Yug, we learn how we can attain divine qualities and divine powers from the Supreme Soul by learning Raja Yoga Meditation. was once a divine land which was the land of deities the immortal land a heavenly abode has now become a land where people are having devilish traits become a land of death it has become hellish to transform this hell into heaven God himself has descended on earth we are aware that our soul cannot be seen through the eyes Similarly, Shiv Paramatma too cannot be seen through the eyes. But through Brahma and the Brahma Kumaris, we see how God is going about establishing a new world order. We were in deep search of God since Dwapar Yug. Now we have come to know the truth of who God really is. But there are so many other devotees who are searching for God in hundreds of temples. They are ready to shed all their time and money. Who are they? They all account for the 33 crore deities who had once lived in this land of Bharat along with us. They are our brothers and sisters. They are all sleeping in the darkness of ignorance. has been trying to create awareness through the Brahma Kumaris for the past 85 years. But still they are sleeping in the deep sleep of ignorance. Who can wake them up? Which power can wake them up? There is one source that can do this. What is that source? The massive power of the media, press, broadcasting, and cinema. This is the only source that can grab the attention of the entire world. As part of this world drama, God has delegated an important task to the media fraternity as well. The echoes of the media would wake up all humanity who are sleeping in the dark sleep of ignorance. 
Brothers and sisters of the press, broadcast and cinema fraternity, you are always in anticipation of exciting news. Can there be a more exciting news in the world than this? They say that by donating, we bring benefit to ourselves. The donation of this awareness would bring multi-million fold benefit. You are going to donate the knowledge of life. That is, you are going to make them realize the truth that they are souls who are imperishable. Ah!